Okay, and continuing with assignment two, we just came back from our from our weekend, right? It's always good to check your course outline. We're going to try to turn this in. We're going to turn something in for this assignment by 11.59 tonight. Remember, for assignments, you have to submit something by their deadline. Otherwise, you get a zero for them and you cannot resubmit. So make sure you submit at least your sketch or something by 11.59 tonight, preferably a, a full turned in assignment. What is required for this assignment? Just like your landscape assignment one, you need your sketch and then you need your final image. Unlike your landscape, the background is going to be turned off on your final and it's going to be saved as a PNG, kind of a free floating sticker image of your creature. Uh, next class, we start proving ground number one. And I'll introduce it at the end of this class. That's actually where we put your fantasy creatures into your fantasy landscapes. So the more we can cut them out, the cleaner they can be, the easier that will be. All right. So if I use the step-by-step -step kind of example here, this is where we got to, basically this is where we got to last class. It's roughly placing and cutting our, our anatomy aspects together. Some are more cleanly cut out than others. What we need to do now is really start blending them. So notice the difference between the feet here, where things are just kind of roughly placed, and then the feet here. And that's where we start blending textures into each other, just like we blended our landscapes. Then we're going to be learning things like clone stamp, uh, looking at dodge and burn a little bit more intensely in order to make everything match and hold well together. So to find this program, what do I need to do? I need to open up my folder, find it in documents. I recommend just dragging it to the desktop, looking in that folder, and hopefully you have an assignment to folder that you've started. And then within that folder, Maybe it looks like mine. We want to separate out our reference assets so they're not muddying it up. But they're a good thing to hold on to just in case we need, need them again. And you never know when you might need to fix something by compositing in something new. Okay, and then I have my PSD. I don't really need this. Um, and I have my sketch, right? So if I double click my PSD, it's going to open up in Photoshop. But our class is learning how to do it with freeware. So just to be reminded of how to use the, the Photo P freeware, you don't double click on your PSD file. Instead, you open up Photo P in your browser preferably an HTML5 browser. Google Chrome seems to work the best with it. As some of you have seen, because we're using Macs, you're kind of defaulting to Safari, which is our backup browser. But PhotoP with Safari doesn't allow you to name the file when you save it. So it's, I recommend, uh, I recommend Chrome. And then you drag and drop your PSD file right into PhotoP, and it will open up. So as you can see, we have a body folder where all the body parts were kind of combined. All the separate aspects are there and cut out. And then we were working on layering up this head last class. And notice none of the colors match, but we're starting to match the anatomy and the edges. And I was going to have like an upper jaw and a lower jaw. Thought that might be interesting. So, what's still left to do? We did some blending last class just by erasing out like the frog's body into the bat's body and we got this transition. And we cut out these wings really nicely last class and kind of made those work with the anatomy of the, the chest of the bat. So if I turn off the uh, sketch behind it, you can see that pretty clearly. We have not cut out the tail yet, but the tail's matching up with the anatomy in, in a way that kind of works. 
And so let's review that as we blend this head together. Now, before you do a lot of careful cutting and, and placing, especially uh, blending with using your eraser at 100%, it's good to play with your direct adjustments. And so direct adjustments help match the colors and the lighting. And when you're working at high resolution, sometimes Photo P can lag a little bit. But once you know what layers you're affecting, then you can start working them together. So I like the warmth. Come on. I like the warmth of these. I like how that orange and this orange kind of work with each other. And so I don't mind the color of the purple and the green, but I'm going to play with, with those levels and with that color balance. So I start with image adjustment levels. I'm affecting this green layer underneath. And I just play with this mid-tone slider. Do I want it to go darker? Or do I want it to go brighter? Or do I want to leave it exactly where it was? Next, actually, I might want to limit the highlights a little bit. So I'm going to take that slider down just a little. So it's not quite so bright. And then maybe brighten the mid-tones. You know, just little tweaks. Now the big things are color color balance, I'm going to start with the mid-tones. And I'm going to push it away from green and towards magenta. So it's not that it doesn't look green, but now it has more variation within those tones. A little bit more towards yellow, and a little bit more towards red. That's the mid-tones. Now the highlights, I'm going to push towards red and yellow. And you start to get a lot more brightness in there. It's not such cool colors. And now in the shadows, I'm going to put a little bit of that cool back in with the blue. And a touch of the, the green in the shadow. So what's the difference when from that super green to that? Right? Which is going to help match with this level again. Sometimes at that point, when you change color, color temperature that much, you might want to then go back to levels again to adjust your mid-tones. Because my mid-tones got kind of darkened that way. So now I might brighten them up a bit. Okay. Now, I'm going to go to the big guns and just see if it's useful. Hue saturation. I can intensify those colors with saturation. I can take saturation down which might not be a bad idea because it's so so intense in some areas or i can just shift the hue but i would only ever do it a little bit on each side within like kind of five steps so i might warm it up just a little bit and then up the saturation just a tiny bit all right now I'm going to do that with the uh, snake's head on top. So it kind of transitions between these. I'm going to start with levels. These are called direct adjustments again. I'm just going to play with the mid-tones. Do I darken them? Do I lighten them? Seems like I, I just want to do that. Then I'm going to go to color balance. And I'm going to start with mid-tones. And I'm going to start putting a little bit more green into the mid-tones. A little bit more blue, which counters that orange. Then I'm going to go to the highlights. Play around a bit with those settings. And then shadows. those cooler shadows in there. All right. So again, went from this now to this. That helps everything kind of match a little bit better. Now I'm ready to start cutting things out. And because this is just three layers, pretty understandable. You know, this guy, this guy, this guy. I'm going to cut out the middle layer and I'm going to use 
a three pixel feather in the settings on my lasso. Go right up to the tongue there in Photopea. And then I hit delete. And the more I hit delete, the more it will bite away by three pixels. And you start to see the teeth of the lower jaw being exposed there. So these are the, the, the clean cuts, right? Because it's all reptilian, these textures aren't soft like fur-like textures. So I can use this lasso and then with that feathered edge and then hit delete a few times and I'll get that really crisp, clean edge. on things like this snake's tongue. I like to do it in chunks like this. I like to have a gray background behind it. And I could use the magic wand as well, but it's actually good to practice with your tablet. Just making clean selections. And I definitely recommend having that feather on there. So this is just like cutting out mountains or rocks or trees in assignment one with the landscape. But now we're doing it to anatomy. All right, next. Before I start cutting out the L, how about I sync up the spine on these, right? The snake's spine is not looking like it connects well with the lizard spine here. And I'm going to want all that to connect in order to go into the back of my bat rib cage. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to distort with option command T. I'm not going to use warp yet. I'm going to try with distort first just because it's it's good about kind of finding the right um, perspective, like uh, the angle of the anatomy. But let's see, option command T. So the angle's right for the mouth, as right as I can get it with this reference. So really all I need to do is maybe just, instead of distorting and widening this side up, which helps a little bit, I'm going to warp and then just tuck the, the spine and arch it up a little bit. Well, I arch the mouth down, so I want to see those teeth. And this is called splitting the difference. So now I'm going to do the same thing to the back of the snake's head. Option Command T, but I don't want to interfere with where I have the eyes for the L. So Option Command T just on the snake head. I'm going to start with Distort. Yeah, but I don't love it, so I'm going to just try warping. Now what's nice about warp, Option Command T, right click inside warp, is that I can just mostly push around the back edge without affecting the, the nose too much. To kind of get those, those textures to line up a little bit better. I can also play with trying to hide this eye, but I'm going to show you a way to, to work within that. Okay, now that they're lined up a little bit better than they were before, now I can start blending. And I do this the same way that I blended the, the frog legs into the bat's stomach. And that's to use a soft, large eraser. So the hardness at 0%, largeness about 300 pixels or so, at 100% opacity. And the first thing I do with a pressure sensitive tablet, so you got to press this to, for it to be pressure sensitive, is I get rid of that crisp cut edge. 